Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be doing another drive and that drive is manufactured by Omron and it's their MX2 model. And as usual, what we're going to do, we're going to do three videos. Uh, we're going to do the commissioning, auto tuning and local running, things like that in the first video. In the second video, we're going to be doing a 2-3-wire uh, control with remote uh, speed control. And third one, we're going to be checking out further with MOP control, which is two buttons, uh, speed control. And also, we're going to be checking out how to set up the multi-frequency setup. So all the manuals, any related videos, everything else that I believe that would benefit you in any possible way will be in the description below. So do check it out. So without further ado, Let's get started. All wired in, and one thing I have to say, we have to lower down the lighting, otherwise we won't be able to see any of the digits in here. So I do apologize if it's, uh, it seems to be quite uh, low, but seems to be visible. So and light, so uh, hopefully you can see everything. So uh, so yeah, let's start with terminals as usual. We got the line and the neutral coming in here where we power our drive, and then we have a T1, T3, T3 coming out, or UVW coming out and going on to the motor. And right up here, we've got everything to do with the DC brakes and resistors and things like that. So uh, this block in here, that will be our uh, relay output. This uh, section in here is going to be for our uh, external connections for additional boards that you can add to the unit. SN and SB is to do with RS, uh, RS485 uh, Mobus uh, connections. So uh, that's for that. And then uh, all the way one from all the way to seven, we got the generous seven inputs, which is awesome. Uh, these are all going to be inputs in here and in here between uh, LP, VLC and uh, P24 is where you can select what source or what sort of a, a, a connection uh, so, uh, power you're going to be having. You're going to be using a sink or source. We are going to be using source, so we're going to be leave L and PLC uh, linked out and use 24 to power off all our uh, inputs. Right in the bottom in here, all the way from uh, EO all the way to L, they are to do to analog inputs and outputs. We're going to be playing with those a little bit uh, later uh, in the upcoming videos. And the rest down there is open uh, collector uh, outputs as well. And those are, we're not going to be using that, we're not going to be even getting into those at all. So, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much the terminals. And then there is these uh, switches, which which ones are quite an interesting ones. So the first switch in there, we're not going to use any of those. So this this switch in here, the first one is uh, called Mobus RT Termi Termination Resistor. Select the switch. We're not going to be using that. The next one in there is called Safety Function Select Switch. We'll look in that if you use it or not, but that's to do with the safety. We want to turn it on or off if you're going to be using it. And uh, the last uh, switch in there, which is actually uh, called EDM function selector switch. Again, this is something we're not even going to get into. So that's pretty much will cover the, the board itself. Uh, so uh, the next we need to look at is uh, the actual uh, control board. And for the menu, I just lost my USB uh, piece a second ago. Uh, this USB in here is brilliant. It's, I love and drive to put these kind of uh, functions into them so we can uh, connect to the PC just by using the standard USB cable. Brilliant, I like that. This one here is RJ45 uh, for a, uh, a digital operator panel if you want to use one. Uh, then uh, when it comes down to menu in here, so uh, run, stop. Self-explanatory is pretty much going around and a, a stop. Uh, this guy in here is switching between the a, a parameter, parameter groups and uh, this one in here is to enter the menu, this one in here just go up and down obviously, self-explanatory. So you enter the menu, the first menu you're going to be seeing is your uh, monitoring group and from there on by clicking this button you sort of cycle through the groups and there is literally how many is in there, I don't even know, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, no, seven groups. So each group will represent some form of uh, uh, setups. So we're going to be going through them more or less and uh, checking them out as we progress with the video. And that pretty much would cover the process so or more or less the introduction, introductory part of the actual drive. So the ne well, next thing we're going to do, we're going to do the factory reset. And to perform factory reset, there's a couple of things we need to check before we do that. And the first parameter we're going to jump on is going to be uh, B84. 
So let's enter it and then go for a uh, B and then go all the way to 84. Hopefully you guys can see it. Yes, it looks visible, more or less. B84. In B84, this is where you pretty much choose what sort of initialization you want to do. We're going to be doing the complete. We're going to be trip parameters and uh, the trip monitor parameters and drive program. We're going to wipe the whole thing off. So you can change that one to a four. You enter that one. The next one you need to check up on is your uh, B85. This is basically where you can uh, a selection between a Japan or Europe and by default this is already set to Europe and the next one is going to be a B94 and in a B94 is more or less is initialization target data 00, zero stands for all we are going to keep it that and then we need to go all the way to 180 B180 oh I overshot that there we go B180 and in there select one Select enter, it'll do its business as you can see, and it should return back to a, a D001. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how the uh, um, factory reset is done. So, uh, next up is let's enter the motor, di motor data. For the next part of our motor uh, setup, we are going to be doing an auto tune. An auto tune in, in this drive is quite an interesting one. So I'm going to run you through a step by step. So the first thing we need to do, we need to we, we need to make sure that we are able to uh, run the drive from local mode, and that will be done in uh, let's go in here in uh, A A two A two. Need to make sure that is on a two. And uh, we're gonna also going to be checking the A3 as well. So uh, we need to check in A3, we need to make sure that our base frequency, whichever country you're in, make sure it's, it is your country's frequency in it. Ours is 50 uh, in here. So the next one, we're going to jump straight to H, uh, H parameters. And the ones we're going to be working on, it's a, a H3 first. And H3 is your kilowatt rating of your motor. So make sure you edit that one in your motor, which my one is 0.2 kilowatt, which is already there. And my drive is actually minimum, maximum you can have. So, and then the following is going to be a H4. And then and a H4 sort of stands for the poles, how many poles your motor will have. Just to give you a, a quick explanation, it's, it's, it's quite often you can see that by the RPM. So if your motor is around about 50, 14, 1500, so you are you are on four poles, and if you are two poles, it would be like three thousand, and if you are six poles, but do check out online how to identify how many poles your motor has. So it's to do with the RPM as well. So uh, the next once we've done that, you pretty much are ready to go, and then you need to go to the H01. This is in H01. You need to select what sort of a auto tune you're gonna have, and option uh, one, so zero one, is gonna be for a stop, basically non-rotational, and option two is gonna be for rotational. Well, rotation. I would only suggest doing rotational if your motor is more or less free of any loads. So I do make sure that is the case. We are gonna be doing a zero one, which is non-rotational, because in many cases, a lot of people that's what they're gonna be doing. So, and plus it's a lot shorter, otherwise you're going to be getting bored watching this. So, uh, and uh, that's what exactly what we're going to do. So, uh, let's go to one by entering one and then just click run button. And you're going to start hearing noises coming out of your motor. So now we just need to wait until it does the all business. From after that, we're going to do one more, one more parameter, which, which is quite interesting and never, never needed to be done like that in other drives, but this drive is interesting. There we go. Once it's done, and if it's everything, if, it, if everything went well, this will pop up. If everything went bad, this uh, the three lines will pop up with nine. So it means that something's not uh, didn't go well. So once that's done, click that, and from there on, so you need to one more thing. So you need to go to do the H parameter again, and, and go to the parameter two and change that to two. And there we go. And uh, once you've done that, you are pretty much done. It has done, took all the parameters we measured and he's done, he's, he's done his business. So auto tune and motor is all been done. All our data is been edited and is ready to go. So next up, we're gonna have a look how to run uh, the drive locally. And to run drive locally and uh, more or less being able to control the frequency, there is a bit complexity of sort of, I would say is involved into it. So. Uh, it's not 
that complex, but usually you're able to just, just uh, select the control speed from these buttons and then you're good to go, but not for this drive. So there's a couple of things we need to do to be able to achieve that. And the first parameter that we need to change is A1. So if you jump for the A1, in A1, we need to make sure that stands at two. So we change that one to two. That's the frequency uh, readout. We're gonna be uh, able to uh, control frequency from. And the next one, we need to go for a B163. So it's gonna be long run up there. Not, 100, is it 163? Yeah, B163. And B163, we need to select that one to one. So, so like that, so like that into one, and from there on, we pretty much are good to go. So basically, you'll be able to monitor and adjust frequency. So let's uh, return back to our standard screen. So as you can see in here, if I click run mode, there's nothing happening. And now you are able to control your speed from here. Oh, as you can see, there's like a small delay. That was interesting. Uh -huh. Let's try a little bit longer there. Yeah, so it's like a small a delay. If you don't want that delay and you're kind of no, no, uncomfortable, the, 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 the manufacturer does write in the manual saying that there is like, a, there could be potentially some form of delays. So if you don't want that, then uh, go into a uh, F. Oh, and this, this is the guy in here. This is the one that uh, the, the, the frequency control. And in here you can do the same thing and you will not have any of those delays. As you can see, no delays. So uh, depending how you want to control it, you can, you can, you, you can do it. So let's, let's, let's show you in a minute. So if you go up front, up, as they, again, manufacturer does say if you are trying to control the frequency in a uh, monitory mode, there is potentially chance of some form of delay, depending on how long you are uh, holding it, and that will diminish depend as well about your your uh, acceleration deceleration as well. So if you go back to the here we are. So and as you can see, we can control from both of them. So that will do, ladies and gentlemen. This is how you pretty much run your uh, motor locally if you wish to with the uh, MX2 uh, inverter drive. It's a really cool drive. It's got a lot of lot of functionality into it. It's packed with everything that everybody will usually would need. So definitely check out the other functionalities. But for the basic run and commissioning and everything we just did today, it is plenty. So ladies and gentlemen, if you like the video, do smash that like, ask questions, anything you like to uh, talk about, definitely uh, type them up in the uh, comment section below. And I will do my best and as, uh, answer them as soon as and as accurate as I can. So other than that, uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.